Many years ago, I traveled for Randy Clark's meeting. And he laid hands on me and said, you will walk in the glory realm. And I came back from that meeting. The first two weeks, everybody I prayed for was healed. I literally was functioning like a God. And I said, wow. I knew it all along. That it doesn't take anything to pray for the sick. I knew we had these things. I knew we carried these dimensions. And I became bold. And I was doing things. But what I noticed was that every night, there was a hunger for me to pray. I noticed that there was an unending hunger for me to fast. And everywhere I hear that there was a need for the kingdom, the first thing that comes to my mind is to empty everything I have. And I said, no, what is going on? I resisted what the Holy Ghost was saying. After two weeks, the anointing lifted. I now knew that what was sustaining the glory was a life of sacrifice, a life of suffering and a life of pain. If I can't stand to pray all night, if I'm not willing to give everything I have, if I can't live a fasted life, then the glory is not for me. God allowed me to have a foretaste to know that what this man walking is the byproduct of the life that they live. If a generation of glory must be born, that generation must embrace suffering and affliction for Jesus. It's replete in scriptures. In Romans chapter 8 verse 18, Paul speaking. He said, I consider that our present suffering is not worth comparing with the glory that should be revealed. In 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 13, these are two different apostles speaking in the same language. He said, but rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may also overjoy when his glory is revealed. The reason Paul brought witness that changed the church was because he was willing to endure affliction for Christ. And Paul told the same to his disciples. He said to Timothy, endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. Endure hardness. The journey of glory, which is the true testimony of rebirth, is to endure hardness for the sake of Christ. We are a weak generation. We are a gullible generation. We are a compromising generation. We are only interested in impartation services and miracle services. We are not interested in service of travail. We are not interested in service of standing for Jesus. And so when I come to a place like this, before we begin to open up the things that Jesus has to offer, we have to establish the foundation to the people. Before you look for mysteries, before you look for utterance, before you look for an anointing, can you bear the demands of that anointing? 